Today, we're going to be exploring some classic Battletech, or some Battletech, using some of the old school rules which are still valid. So for this particular exercise, we're going to be using a wasp. And since it's mostly movement, let's just run through this. Walking six, running nine, and jumping six. So the premise of this first exercise, I'll just lay out some waypoints. and we'll travel through each one in order. Just to go over the details of a map, you've got wooded areas, but you've got two types. You've got a light wood, such as this. Heavy wood, heavy forest, like that. We also have elevation for hills, a mech is considered a level 2, so if you're standing behind a level 2, you can't be seen. But if you're standing behind a level 1, then you can be partially seen. These are considered rough, which force a pilot skill roll if you're uh, walking through it. And there's a few of them on the board. This is a classic map. We also have water, level one, meaning up to the waist or so, and level two, fully submerged. When you're in water, depending on where the heat sinks are, you can get additional heat removed. That's what the heat sinks do. So our mech today starts 5.17, our wasp, and makes his first moves. The pilot continues. One, moving into an empty space requires one movement point. Changing facing requires one movement point. So two, and what's always a good idea, is you lay down where you start. That comes useful during combat. Three, four, five, moving into a wooded area is an additional movement point, a light area. Six, seven, eight, nine. And that would be the end of turn one. So, turn two, we move forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that is the end of turn two. Turn three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine. Next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. So from here to checkpoint five, we've got terrain differences and wooded areas, which would increase movement by extra points across the board. Going around is a long way. Going back, it's also a long way. Luckily, this particular mech can jump. One, two, three, four, five, six. It can jump six hexes. Because it's got a jump of six, it can jump over all the terrain that's here. That's three for the elevation plus two for the trees. So that's a total of five, which is more than enough to cover it all. When you've got a jump, jump points, your number, in this instance, jump six, means you can move up to six hexes, but also the height total has, can be six that you jump over. You're jumping at height six. So from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just jumps. When you land, you're able to land in any direction you choose. Oops. The hassles with jumping is that everyone can see you. You're up in the air. So drawing line of sight from other locations becomes easier. But you are a moving target. Final round, one, two, three, four, five, and six to get back. So that mostly covers movement, and obviously it makes it easier when you can jump and when walking. You've got a good speed. Something like the Locust can run very fast, up to 12 hexes, but with constantly moving around terrain pieces, requires a fair bit of maneuverability. And something like the Wasp, with its medium lasers and SRM2s, the key would be to try and strike into the, the more vulnerable areas. Hit and fade. I'll admit, the Wasp is one of my favourite. They're arguably the weakest and one of the... I don't know why I kind of like it, but it's still... it's. Not terribly functional. It's very good for trying to bring down larger mechs as long as it's um, you can get behind and fire into there. I'm just base coated at the moment, working out color schemes, sort all that out. So this is movement on a battlefield. Obviously. This particular battlefield is a 17 by 22. Most battlefields are two of these side by side. So requiring, if you're using hexes, 34 by 22. In a non-hex environment, the requirements are that you look at doing a two inches per hex and that would openly take you onto a four by four a four foot by four foot board if you wanted to take it to a larger board that's okay it's just that obviously that's um 
just going to be lots of space, which is fine. But on a hex, on a hex map, we're just moving hexes. Moving down a level requires pilot skill check. And uh, that would stop you from falling down. And as we said before, walking through the rubble also causes a pilot skill roll, a PSR pilot skill roll. In this instance, we have a pilot skill of five. Two D six, five or higher. Makes it simple. What makes it not so useful? If it's taken damage, it's lost a gyro, lost a leg, or there are other factors involved for the pilot skill. If you get pushed or kicked, if there's another force that's coming through. Okay. So this is movement. We've just covered through some walking, running, jumping. Very simple. It gets tricky once we've got to get to combat. Now for some live firing. So we start our wasp in our spot. Over here we have an urban mech, or two of them. So the urban mech has a small laser and an auto cannon 10. In this instance, they won't be firing. We just have to fire at them just to work out how combat works. At this point we're going to assume that the wasp goes first. The urban mechs have a normal walking speed of 2 with a running speed of 3. They also have a two jump, but we won't be um, causing too much hassle for these things. They're not firing back. It's for us to get practice on live fire. So our wasp has a couple of options. One, two, three, four, five. Change face, six. One, two, three, four, five, six seven hexes away from here. If the mech falls back, that's nine. That puts both the short range missile and the medium laser at long range, meaning that it's a base eight to hit, plus his walking takes it to nine. If he runs, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. Even moving back is six, which keeps it within medium range. So now he's run. Now the wasp has run. That takes eight. Six for medium range, plus two for running. So nine long range walking this is an eight running at medium range so we decide to run one two three four five six seven eight nine This one moves back to ka-chunk, ka-chunk. This one jumps into the light forest. 
and shooting, which happened simultaneously. At this point, we won't be fired upon, but if we did, the number of hexes that the wasp moved would come into play as part of their target. They've moved two. The wasp has a nine. So that's not much of a change whatsoever. And now we can roll some dice. So the wasp is going to fire the medium laser. One, two, three, four, five, six. Medium range and the short range missile. Both of which are at the outer edge of medium range. First, the laser. Hits. So the next step, once you've hit, is working out the damage location. It's a front attack from the center of the point to there, which is in the front arc. And we roll for location. Four. Right arm. So we do five points of damage to the right arm. What would normally happen? Is it on the right arm? We would take off five points of damage. Cross off one, two, three, four, five. Leaving five more points on the right arm. Now, the short range missile. Also a hit. Because it's a missile, the missile doesn't always land with every single salvo. So on an 8 plus, both hit up to the 8, 7 or less, only one of the two missiles. In this instance, both missiles hit. Because it's a short range missile, we fall, roll for location on both missiles. Three. Again with the right arm. And 11 on the left arm. So on the sheet, the opponent would take off the medium laser, one here, two points off for the short range missile, leaving only three points left on the right arm and two off on that side. So now we're looking back down at the wasp again. So we see that it's three heat for the medium laser, pop, 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 two for running, and two more for the short range missile fire, for a total of seven heat generated. At the end of the round, these heat sinks suck out that heat. So at this point, there's not gonna be a lot of option for heating for the wasp, unless something happens that causes an engine failure. Uh, damage to the engine means that you lose five heat sinks, and then sometimes additional heat sinks exist in other locations.
which can all lead to generating enough heat to eventually blow up or shut down. It's important to note that weapon fire happens simultaneously, so even if the wasp was able to remove the weapon, during that same round the urban mech would also still be able to fire. So just for um, completeness we will just launch a, an auto cannon shot against the wasp. So the urban mech one, two, three, four, five, six. Six hexes away. Puts it in medium range for the auto cannon 10. Then at medium range is a six. The urban mech walked plus one. And the wasp moved one, two, three, four, five six hexes. So a total of six hexes, which is an additional plus two. So six for medium range, plus two, plus one for a nine. Some of these pluses may not seem like a lot, but going from eight to nine is a drop from like 40% to 26 or 27%. So it's a massive hit and then it scales down even further. So on a 9, the Irby fires the AC-10, scoring a hit. So the AC-10 does 10 points of damage to a single location and we roll for whereabouts that's going to happen. Three. Three, which is the right arm. So if we look at the wasp, one, two, three, four, all the outer armor is gone. Five, six, seven. The entire arm has been destroyed leaving three points left, which moves it into the next location, which is the right torso. The right arm is also where the medium laser is. And that's how fragile it can get. Head locations are always some of the weakest spots as are the rear armor but in one fell swoop the urban mech pop 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 took out the arm. Now if the damage hadn't been enough to run through then what we would have looked at is whether or not there would have been a chance for a critical hit which would have damaged one of these. Sometimes there are lots of items that can be put in or some weapons or equip pieces of equipment have multi takes up take up multiple locations. So the auto cannon 10 uh, takes up uh, something like about um, six locations. So if we have a look at the Urban Mac, one more time. That's why we have the one to three, four to six. And roll again. So if the there was a critical hit on the right arm, then you've got a good chance that the auto cannon is going to take some of that. And once the auto cannon is damaged, then it can't be fired. So Cordio. So 
So where does that put our little wasp? And of course, this other urban mac could also take a shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hexes away. So that would still probably put it in medium range. I think it does. With the same modifiers. Except this one jumped. And jumping adds to their difficulty to this person's difficulty for firing. So the overall value of what is needed. All right, so just have a quick calculation. Plus three for the jump, six range, two for the amount of distance that it traveled here, meaning that it's an 11 or higher required. And it doesn't work. So fires and misses. One point comes off the ammo. And that is why jumping and firing is a little tricky. It adds three to the gunnery skill modifier. So it's important to remember that the urban mech outmasses the wasp by 10 tons, and there are two of them. So initiative every round is handled by just rolling 2d6 for the urban max, 11 for the wasp, 5. So the urban max go first. Well, the urban max win initiative, which means that the wasp goes first for movement. But we're just going to fudge the dice rolls because I want to show something else. So we're going to say that the wasp won. The initiative forcing AVs to move. He moves back. This urban mech moves back two more spots. And our wasp Oh, sorry, and this one over here decides to not move, but it just changes face. So that's a walk. Decides to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six. I forgot to put that there. Run seven hexes. Straight line. Adjacent. Weapons fire. Short range missile from here to there. Short range, it's four. Ran, six. Not enough movement modifier for that. And hits. How many missiles hit? One missile hits. Location six, which I think is right torso. Yep. So we mark off two points on the right torso. So our wasp is going to kick the urban mech, and kicking hits on a three plus with no other real modifiers in this instance. doing four points of damage on a successful hit, which it does. And on the kicking location. And we roll a six for the left leg. So the urban mech also gets a kick. Just making it. If the urban mech had failed the kick, then a pilot skill roll would be required to stop it from falling over. Falling over means it takes damage. And we could work all that 
as it happens. Punching and kicking and the physical attacks occur well after all the weapons have been fired. And if you're adjacent to the opponent, then you can either perform a, a punch or a kick. The punching is does less damage, but you're hitting the upper half of the, the target mech. So more chance of a headshot or you know, obviously hitting something a little bit more vital. The kicking affects mostly what well, affects entirely the lower legs or the legs and they're usually a bit more stronger than the arms. So we've just run through some combat. The poor boss was going to get annihilated, smacked about. What we didn't cover is terrain. So in this instance, the mech, the urban mech, is in the light woods. So it's beneficial, there's benefits from cover, from being in it, and also in front of it. When the urban mech fires at the wasp, it just gets the one bit of cover. So that adds plus one for each hex of light cover. So for the wasp to shoot at the urban mech would add two to all the other modifiers for terrain and for the urban mech to shoot at the wasp would add one. Inside the heavy, heavy, uh, heavy woods that adds two. If you manage to have intervening terrain of like that, where you've got a heavy and the light woods in the middle, that is the maximum you can get, plus three. And anything more than that, you're disrupting the line of fire and it's hidden. So if the wasp was here, would benefit from all of that cover and would be not able to be fired at at all. If it runs down a line, then you include the cover. Shooting across terrain like this, as we said, that's level one, so it's partial cover. That adds a modifier of, of plus one. And then you've got an altered hit location chart because only half the mech is, is available. Here, completely out of sight, level two. And if you had a level one with trees, that also counts as uh, increasing the, the terrain level. As we were doing when we were moving before, level three with trees takes it to a total of level five. So this is basically how a game of Battletech works. And that was one mech, doing that with a small lance or a lance of four. Lance composition is, can be either, as we said before, points or made up of tonnage. If you're playing a more of a themed arrangement, you might put um, a fire lance up against an assault lance or a broken lance, which is less than a full lance, usually three, to even up the, the points or odds. But uh, usually, if you're working in tons, it's 200. But points, you just work out between the two of you, what between your opponents. You can have multiple players, uh, each holding onto a lance, and then have three, have a large board with three players on each side representing a full company. And have objectives to achieve. There are also buildings that can go on board, and they can be used as defensive mechanisms or targets for attack or objectives to achieve. This is a game where it's entirely left between the two players 
and there's a number of resources a quick shout out to death from above gaming they've got a number of modifications to the game to sort of streamline it to make it a little bit easier but what i'm trying to show is is the base game in its originality and then you sort of have an idea i, I kind of like how it works but that's just me grognards unite so thank you very much this has been a, a wild ride hopefully we'll get a few of these painted and we'll work out some color schemes if you've got some suggestions throw them down i was just going to run with some city basic urban for the urban mechs because they are mostly police force or local militia they're just walking cannons they just walk around going dum, 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 and just fire ac 10s beautiful all right well thank you very much for this brief intro and i hope to be doing a few more we'll see you around all right so like subscribe all the bits and pieces check out the patreon page every now and then just to see if there's anything useful and hopefully we'll get a bit more of this on the board once we get some restrictions out we're still covered for posterity we're still covered and we're still limited to what we can do but there are a number of people that would love to get together and throw down a game all right thanks Stay safe, everyone. Wear masks. All right, thanks. Bye.